Well, what are over-the-air updates? OK, in very simple terms, it is a change to the car, usually software change, that is made over the air via the internet. It means that your car can be parked outside your house and the manufacturer can send out a signal to the car and then arrange for a software program, an app or whatever it is, an update, to be downloaded automatically. These obviously are very good. If your car needs a slight change, let's say your maps. So your maps, you might use Google Maps. Uh, those change on a regular basis. Uh, people are forever building new roads, uh, adding roundabouts, junctions, changing speed limits. And so if you need to update your maps on a regular basis, it's much better if you're fast asleep and the manufacturer sends an over-the-air update to your car. So you wake up in the morning, you don't know anything has changed, but when you get to a junction with a new road, you suddenly find that road's now on your maps. And it's really quite quick. Most of the map updates are very, very fast indeed. So that's the good advantage of an over-the-air update. However, you can't do an over-the-air update on a car that has not been designed and built to do over-the-air updates. That's fairly logical. So we're talking here about some of the legacy ICE cars, the old petrol and diesel cars. I'm going to say old, a couple of years old. They had no facility whatsoever for doing anything over the air. There was no over the air update available. If you wanted anything doing, you had to take your car into the dealer and they would do the update for you. So that's an inconvenience. So EVs are a step forward in terms of convenience. It's now done while you're sleeping. You don't have to take your car in. However, one of the other advantages of over-the-air upgrades is you can add new features that weren't included on the original car as it was delivered. Let me give you an example. If your car doesn't have Apple Play, you buy an EV, doesn't have Apple Play. Now, at some point in the future, your manufacturer might do a deal with Apple which allows Apple Play. They can then send that through to your car. EVs are adapted to allow over-the-air updates, many of them. And you now wake up and find you've now got Apple Play on your car when you didn't have it before. So there are two different types of over-the-air upgrades. The first one is a maintenance type issue and the second one is an enhancement. So some of the legacy auto, when they're looking at what people like Tesla, BYD and others are doing, they were seeing that Tesla was making an awful lot of money from people who, once they bought their car, were then choosing upgrades. So, for example, all Teslas, new, come with one month free uh, advanced uh, connectivity. And this gives you access to things on the screen like uh, Netflix, YouTube, uh, gaming, things like that. Do you have to have it? No. You could always use your own phone. Uh, people do with things like Apple Play. So they get in the car, their phone takes over the display and they use Apple Play for, uh, for uh, navigation, for example. And they can also use some of the other features. But it's an inconvenience. You have to connect all the time and disconnect. It means that uh, if, if you don't take your phone with you, you don't have those features on your car. So an awful lot of people at the end of the one month free connectivity service will just opt for another one. They'll extend it and they will pay somewhere around about £10 a month and they will get connectivity into the car. You don't need your mobile phone with you anymore. Your car itself will do things like the Netflix and the YouTube and uh, play gaming. It's just a lot more convenient. Now, the Legacy Auto saw this and they thought, hey, there's a way of making money. And this actually turned out to be not quite what the motorist was expecting. So, for example, Toyota was one of the first. They issued their cars with um, remote key fobs and the remote starting facility. So if you're in your house and it's really cold outside, you can physically start your engine from inside with the, through the hob, uh, through the key fob. 
Uh, and that was given free. People bought the car, got the free key fob and had that service. But it was always specified in the details that it was uh, an offer and it wasn't permanent. Well, recently, Toyota have started charging people to use that facility. So all of a sudden, something you've been using for four, five, six, seven, eight years, free of charge, you now get a bill for. And if you want to be able to have that facility of starting remotely, then you now have to pay for it. BMW joined in, they jumped on the bandwagon, and they did the same with heated seats. And this one is rather different. You see, when you buy a BMW, it either has or it hasn't got heated seats. If it's got them, you've bought them, and they're part of the car. But BMW don't agree with you. BMW think if you want to actually use them after the first year, you should pay for using them. So you've bought the car, you've bought the seat, you've bought the heaters in the seat, you now have to pay for switching it on. And there was an absolutely massive backlash for this. And people say, well, what happens if my seats break down? Because I'm paying for it, will you come out and repair it free of charge? Because you're paying, because like, I'm paying you for it. And BMW said, no, that's silly, don't be silly. We're just uh, charging you for the use of it, not for repairing it. And it went through a few legal battles and BMW backed down. They now don't charge for using what's already there. So the legacy auto now see they're missing out on a very big income. Look at Tesla, full self-driving. You may like it or like think it doesn't work or never will work, doesn't matter. Some people do. And so people who buy cars from Tesla will often add full self-driving at a later date. And this is four, five, six, seven, eight thousand dollars in, in America. I think it's about four, three and a half, four thousand pounds in the UK. And that's a lot of money particularly when some of these uh, legacy autos, they only make $500 or $1,000 per car. To be able to get an upgrade two or three years later and collect six, seven thousand pound or dollars, that's huge. So they like the idea of this, but they're not able to do it. So they're all trying their own different methods. They will do, they will charge for things that you used to get for free and they'll get a blowback from the customers. Customers will just stop using it or stop buying the cars. They say it's just, just blatant exploitation. Now, is it exploitation for full self-driving on a Tesla? No. You see, if you buy a Tesla without full self-driving, you're buying a Tesla without full self-driving. You don't expect to get full self-driving. You had a choice of opting for it when you bought it and could have paid extra, but you chose not to. The fact that it's in your car, ready to go, has nothing to do with this equation at all. You chose a car which didn't have full self-driving activated. So if in one, two or three years time you decide you now want full self-drive, why should you get it free just because it's in your car? That would be silly. So what they do is they charge you for it as if you'd ordered it at the same time when you bought your car. So. To me, totally fair. It is something that you didn't have when you bought the car, didn't expect to have, but you had the option of adding it at a later date. Now, there are other things in there that over-the-air updates do, and this is in giving you en enhancements. So my car, for example, it's now seven years old. I'm still getting over-the-air updates, by the way. And one of those updates was a range improvement. Now, I bought the car, and the car had a certain size battery in it, and the software limited the amount of battery I could use based on what it thought was safe for the battery without wearing it out too quickly. But monitoring it over the years, they found out that actually they were being a bit too overcautious, that they were holding back more of the battery capacity than they actually needed. It wasn't wearing out the battery at a, the fastest rate it could imagine. It was actually doing far better. So with an update recently, um, it just came over the air. I was asleep, done in the morning, and it just said I've now got more range. They don't specify you've got another 17 miles or 37 miles. It's just said we've released more range. Same with performance. 
They found that by the performance is not affecting the battery as much as they thought. And don't forget, my car now is 2016, which means it would have been made in 2015 in America. All, all the Model S's come from America. Um, and so 2016, this is <laughs> nearly 10 years ago. Um, and the technology and performance and the knowledge of the batteries and the motors and everything else was not the same that it is today. So they're learning all the time. They monitor all the cars and they're discovering things. And one of the things they're discovering is the batteries are lasting longer than they feared. And the performance, you can use more of it than they were at first thinking was good for the motor. So my car has had a number of upgrades. It now will drive further than it would when I bought it. And it goes 0 to 60 a little bit faster than when I, a little bit quicker uh, than when I bought it. And there are other features. So things like uh, mobile phones. When I got the car, it could only support one mobile phone. I got a free update, which said it can now support two. And you have to designate one of those phones as your primary phone. Uh, but if either of the phones receives a phone call while driving, it will answer it. But if two arrive together, it will answer the primary phone first, not the same. That's a feature I didn't have when I bought the car. So there's distinct levels of over-the-air updates. And this is the one thing that the legacy auto aren't understanding. For BMW to try to use an over-the-air update to limit your use of the heated seat functions, if you don't pay, is very different to Tesla sending an over-the-air update to me for no charge, which gives me a little bit more range and a little bit better performance. So the legacy of finding this out, first of all, people don't like the cars. They don't like being charged for something they've already had, but they're not getting anything extra. The car is deteriorating and the over-the-air updates do nothing about that. With an EV, over-the-air updates can change your experience of the car, can change the range, can change the uh, performance, can also change the charging speed as charges develop. So over-the-air updates cover a wide spectrum and the legacy auto at the moment are finding out that their ability to apply over-the-air updates is severely limited because the cars themselves don't have that technology built into them when they're made in the factory. And the number of things that they can control and try and charge you for are very, very limited. And it usually involves taking away something that you have for many years had for free. EVs do genuine over-the-air updates they will offer enhancements and features that you didn't have before. So the Legacy Auto is now missing out. They not only make less profit on a car when they sell it than someone like Tesla or BYD does, but they're also missing out on this vast after-sales market of over-the-air updates where customers will pay for something that they see as an extra that wasn't available or wasn't chosen at the time of purchase. Well, thanks very much for watching. If you have enjoyed this video, please click the like button. And if you'd like to see more, please subscribe and click the notification bell so we can notify you next time we launch a video. And a massive thank you to all our Patreon supporters. It is your support that enables us to go out and make these videos for you. So thank you very much for your contribution. I'm Dave.